All right, now I'm going to look at an example of how the mean value theorem is actually applied, how you find that value of C. So the wording will say something like this. It will say uh, something like, find the value of C guaranteed by the mean value theorem. They'll give you a function. They'll give you an interval. Okay, this time the function is x squared. It's the interval from 1 to 4. Notice it's a closed interval. It's got that as the, the, the uh, endpoints. Okay, uh, physically what's happening here is you've got y equals x squared, which of course is a parabola doing this kind of thing. Uh, we're looking at the point going from 1, x equals 1, over to x equals 4. Uh, this is the point 1, 1. This is the point 1, 16, if you substitute in the function. And again, physically what we're saying here is that because the function is continuous and differentiable on this interval, if I find the average rate of change, there should be at least one point somewhere between 1 and 4 where the derivative is the same as the average rate of change. In other words, the slope of the tangent line is the same as the slope of the secant line. Okay? So really what I'm doing here is I'm setting f of b minus f of a all over b minus a equal to the derivative and figuring out for what value of x are those two things equal. Okay? So uh, this is really just finding the slope between the two points. So f of b minus f of a really just going to be 16 minus 1. Um, B minus A is really just going to be 4 minus 1. Uh, so the slope here is going to be 15 over 3, which is just equal to 5. Okay? So what I'm trying to figure out here is, for what value of X is the derivative, is the slope of the tangent line going to be equal to 5? Okay? So I'm setting my average rate of change of 5 equal to the derivative. So my average rate is 5. The derivative of my function is y equals 2x, y prime equals 2x. So I'm setting this equal to the derivative. Where is the derivative equal to 5? Well, if I solve that, uh, we find out that x is equal to 2.5. Okay, The c value that I'm looking for is 2.5. Again, there could be multiple c values, uh, but we're guaranteed one. In this case, there is only one. So that says, uh, again, I. It's not drawing the scale very well here, uh, but it's saying that it's 2.5. That's my value of c. That's where the slope of the tangent line is equal to the slope of the secant line. Okay, where the average rate of change is equal to the instantaneous rate of change. Now I'm going to look at a slightly tougher example of the mean value theorem. Uh, this time I'm given the function x cubed plus 2x squared minus x. I'm given the interval between negative 1 and 2. And I'm again asked to find the value that a value of c that's guaranteed by the mean value theorem. Um, this function is a polynomial function, which means it's continuous for any values of x. And it's also going to be a smooth curve because it's a polynomial function. So I know it's continuous and differentiable on the interval. I don't have to worry about the case where there's a cost or a discontinuity or something like that. In which case, basically, you just say the mean value theorem doesn't guarantee anything and you just stop. Uh, but in this case, though, it's going to work. Um, so, I need to set the average rate of change for the interval equal to the derivative of the interval and see where that occurs, for what value or values of x does that occur, okay? So, the average rate of change here, uh, f of b minus f of a, that's going to be f of 2 minus f of negative 1, and then it's over the change in x, which is going to be 2 minus negative 1. And I just need to get that to work out. Um, for this particular interval, um, let's see, if we substitute 2 in here, we're going to get uh, 8, we're going to get another 8, and then minus 2. So that's 8 plus 8 is 16, minus 2 is 14. Okay, that's 14. Uh, if I put negative 1 in here, that's negative 1. Uh, that's going to be positive 2, and that's going to be positive 1. So it looks like we can get a value of 2 there. It's f of 2 minus f of negative 1. Okay, all over 2 minus negative 1, which is really just 3. And that's going to work out to be 4. Okay, so the average rate of change is 4. Okay, so this is 4, and we're setting that equal to the derivative of the function. Of course, the derivative of the function is just going to be 3x squared plus 4x minus 1. So set the average rate of change, which I found over here, equal to the instantaneous rate of change, 
Uh, we're, we're looking for that value of C. I suppose you could fill C's in here if you wanted to, but we're looking for that X value that's going to make that derivative equal to the average rate of change. Uh, so I need to solve this equation here. Um, I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. I'm uh, making 0 is equal to 3x squared plus 4x minus 5. Now, I'm always hoping it's going to factor. I've tried this ahead of time. It doesn't factor. I, I don't get a whole lot of value. Okay? So I always try to factor first. If that fails, I go to the quadratic formula. Uh, in this case, x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 16, minus 4 times a times c. all over 2 times a, which is 2 times 3, okay? Uh, so that's going to be negative 4 plus or minus the square root. Um, that's going to end up being positive 60 plus 16 is the square root of 76. It's not a whole number value. And all over 6, okay? Uh, if you put this in a calculator, you are going to get decimal values. AP says it's okay to round to three or more decimal places. You're going to get two answers. You're going to get approximately 0.786, and you're going to get approximately negative 2.1196. Okay? Looks like you're going to have two answers here, except the mean value theorem only guarantees you values inside that interval between negative 1 and 2. Okay? You'll notice this is outside of the interval. So although it works, it's not one of the values guaranteed by the mean value theorem, which means in this particular problem, I'm only looking for the values guaranteed by the mean value theorem. So mathematically it works, but it isn't guaranteed by the mean value theorem. That's the value that works. So that an x value, uh, which we usually call c in these problems, uh, and an x value of about 7.86, the average rate of change, the slope of the secant segment for this function, is the same as the slope of the tangent. That's the basic idea there.